how is it different with this team? Uh, this team is reminds me a little bit of, of the uh, 04 Idiots. They seem to have that kind of camaraderie, and I guess they really have become uh, the darlings of the city, huh? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the town was a little reluctant to embrace them, and, and uh, after a bad year and a half, uh, a lot of, you know, the worst team in 47 years, and, you know, just a lot of mismanagement and, and bad feeling left over. But, uh, this is really a worthy team in terms of, you know, the walk-off wins and the, the team spirit, not having individual stars as much and, you know, kind of the stuff that, uh, that you do root for. And, and the management had a great off season and almost everything that they did has worked. What in your mind, if it is one thing and maybe it's a lot more than one, but what is it that you point to that really made it come together for this team? Well, I, I you know, the, the Yui Hara thing is, to where they are now. I mean, having this, this, you know, closure by default, you know, after they tried to give the job to Hanrahan and Bailey and, and then in the middle of the season, they turned it over to this 30 year old guy who failed badly in the playoffs two years ago. And I don't know where this comes from. It's not like he's anybody thinks he's juicing or anything. I mean, the guy's the guy and, uh, but he's been really untouchable. That makes a big difference. And they had really good starting pitching out of the game. They had very few games where, the game was over in the fourth or fifth inning. And uh, and obviously everybody's sick of hearing about them grinding out at bats, and it makes the games interminable. But, they, you know, last year they couldn't make outs fast enough, and this year they've gotten back to the approach of uh, trying to get your starter out of the game in the middle of the game and then go to your bullpen. And so many guys, top to bottom, have contributed on this. I mean, you've from Napoli to Victorino to Salt to Macchia. What guy's story this year do you like that's really been the guy that you've been, you know, impressed by? Or which guy, what story do you like out of all these guys? And on a team of stories, which one do you like? Well, yeah, you can take your pick, but I think that, uh, you know, right now uh, the the kid playing third base, Bogarts, is that, that's a great story. You know, he's... 21 years old and a position player it's very rare to see a guy in this in this showcase and uh they kind of had people slumping on the left side of the infield and and went to him and he he reached base seven times and scored seven runs in the last round i think he's three for six he's hitting 500 it's a very small sample makes you want to see more he has a tremendous approach and you know that was pretty good pitching in that detroit series and so uh I'm fascinated by you know him at third base in the World Series. You know he's only been in pro ball a, a short amount of time. From Aruba, uh, really sweet kid. Doesn't have his driver's license here in the <laughs> states. I mean it's it's just uh, he's fun to follow. And they've been they've been loyal to Drew because they really could put Bogarts at short and put Middlebrooks at third if they wanted to. But they they're committed to Drew. They keep playing him despite the fact he hasn't hit right. Yeah, I think that if if Drew uh, if Middlebrooks were hitting, you probably would have seen him have a little less rope with Drew. But you know, Drew made a great play for him in the Detroit series for the end. He's in a dr- terrible slump. Fans hate him because he's J.D.'s brother and he's not hitting. Uh, and it's just, you know, people can't get him out of here fast enough. But he's a he's a good big league shortstop. And he's more of a uh, of a long view guy than, than a couple games guy. And, and he really had a terrific year in the field. And they're convinced that they have a better chance to win, even though he's not hitting. Is there a story to this bearded group? Is there something that started this thing? Well, we're all pretty tired. We're all pretty bearded out. But I mean, you know, every time they, they reach another level, it, it's it, it's new again. And uh, you know, Gomes and, and Napoli in, in spring training. I think Gomes really got it going. And and then once they uh, started tearing it up in August and really you know leap in the field in the American League East. Uh, more guys were kind of pressured into joining in. It's it's almost universal now. It's funny because Yuihara it does not. He's clean shaven. He used to have a beard, and uh, when he was not as good in Texas. And but there's very few, you know very few abstentions right now. Are you worried about the starting pitching for the Red Sox? Yeah, I think there's there seems to be some. Again, I'm just getting to the ballpark now, but some new information about Buckholz. You know, the notion that he's not pitching in the in the second game and. Uh, he hasn't been the same since the last night in New York, which is in June. And then he went on the show for three months, you know, neck, shoulder stuff. Uh, he, he's been a few ticks off with his fastball. His command hasn't been as good. More balls sailing up and out of the zone from both sides of the plate. Um, just not the same picture. Now, he gutted it out and had five good innings, shut down the Tigers. But you could see it go away. It goes away on him faster and faster. And, and they did. Nobody was happy with Morales coming in and, and, and spitting it up there. But 
it was time for Buckholz to go. They were they were about ready to to land on him. I tell you, who would have thought? We're talking about Dan Shaughnessy, Boston Globe, before Game One World Series up in Boston this evening. Who would have thought we'd see Lackey after the stuff we heard in the last year? Who would have thought we would have seen Lackey pitching in the postseason for the Red Sox? Absolutely, it was a pariah, and uh, you know, every all the fans wanted him out. The, the players never really lost faith in him. He's never been really a a clubhouse pariah. The guys like him. And uh, we were thinking maybe too much, you know, the whole chicken and beer brigade and all that stuff. But, you know, the clubbies, he tends to be a popular guy. And he's been in the big leagues since 2002. He won the seventh game of the World Series. Yep. He's 24 years old. Absolutely. Mike yep. I think he started 12 postseason games. He was kind of a go-to guy out there. And we never really saw that guy. And, of course, he's overpaid. And then he then he got pounded. But his year in 2011, his ERA was 6.41, which was the worst in history for a starter in Boston. And uh, he was pitching with arm trouble. And uh, so he gets the, the Tommy John surgery, and, and here he is. Uh, it's, it's interesting, and, and he's your game two guy. So, um, yeah, it's quite a he, – he is the redemption story on team redemption. It really is. We're talking with Dan Shaughnessy. How about Ellsbury? Is Ellsbury is – it, is it a foregone conclusion that he is finishing up his Boston career, or, or is there a chance he could be back next year? I believe it's over, and I understand that. The Sox, they kind of – can can let him go now without looking bad or cheap or that they're not look, getting their player. I mean, after what happened when Crawford comes in for seven years, 142 million, I think that's where this is going with Ellsbury. And and there's there's kind of a recoiling from those kind of contracts now, and even on the part of the fans. And you know you've seen it. You know the whole. Yep. I, I know he's not Pujols or Josh Hamilton or A Rod kind of money, but it's still it's going to be north of 100 million. And I think that you know they just went short term with all the guys they got in the off season, older guys. I, I think they'll they'll be able to sell it as we we can't afford the player. And as you know, Mike, all it takes is one. And if the Red Sox are willing to outbid every other team in baseball, he will be their player. That's the way Scott Boros rolls. There's no attachment for this guy to this this town, this team. That's fine, and he's he's actually it's it's working magically for Scott because even though the home runs went away and the injury stuff was there, he's really he looks great right now, and there's plenty for Scott to sell. Scott will have him sounding like DiMaggio when this thing's over.